Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 63, we're going to talk about balanced versus unbalanced circuits. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so what in the heck is a balanced and unbalanced circuit? Well, an unbalanced circuit just has one signal path, and that would describe 99% of home audio. Let's just take a look at something you can really understand easily. This is, this is a Blue Jeans RCA patch cord, right channel. The center conductor carries the whole signal for the right-hand channel. The outside jacket acts as a shield and carries the ground. That's so that's easy peasy. We all get that. Balance a balance circuit has two, yep, two separate signal paths. And when they arrive at your power amp, they need to be recombined into a single unbalanced. I knew I was going to screw that up. Into a single unbalanced signal. <laughs> you try saying that a dozen times. <laughs> okay, but let's back up a little bit. Why do we even need a balanced circuit? Well, in three words, long cable runs. Yep, that's the main purpose. When you have a very long cable run, it can be prone to picking up noise. A good example of this would be a studio microphone connected to the mixing board via a 10 meter or 33 foot cable. With a balanced circuit, you significantly reduce the induced noise. Let's take a look at how that works. Okay, so let's, let's just imagine we've got the right channel coming off of our turntable and we're plugged, plugged right in here to the RCA in, right? We start off, here's a depiction of our audio signal. We start off in a nominal positive phase if we don't know what the preceding stage was. And then we go into the negative phase. We split off and we stay the same, right? We haven't done anything to the signal other than just divide it into two wires. So we stay positive. Now this is the non-inverting side of our balanced circuit. So this just depicts an amplifier stage. It could be a tube, it could be solid state. Don't worry about what it's doing. This is just to give us an idea as to what actually is happening on a very simple basis. So this is the non-inverting side. So here we are, we stay, we stay nominally in the positive phase. Down here we come in in the positive phase, this is the inverting side. And we invert the signal 180 degrees out of phase. Now Here's something that confused me for a long time. So, if this is the right-hand channel of our record groove, whole, is this half the right-hand channel and this the other half? No, it's not. We could actually tap into this side or this side and we'd have the entire right-hand channel. This would be in phase, this would be out of phase. Okay, now, we have another, another stage. This recombines. So what does that look like? Well, it's going to look like this. And our signal has both, both phases get recombined in whatever that circuit is. Now, imagine that this is the long cable run. And, of course, it's running XLR connectors at each end. Now, these aren't running parallel to each other. To help reduce noise, they're twisted. So we have a twisted pair, and they're going to have, um, they're going to have a jacket around them that will be connected to ground, and it will act as a shield. And that will further reduce noise. So let's imagine that noise crept into that cable somehow. Remember, a studio environment is going to have all kinds of electronics, so that's, that's no big surprise, is it? So, 
here's a little bit of noise depicted hiding on our signal. Now the noise is going to arrive in phase. Ah, oh, interesting, eh? It is. Now what happens when these two signals are recombined is that our noise cancels itself out and the signal stays whole. Neat, huh? That's, that's it. roughly how this works. Now, let's get a different color. What happens over here in our unbalanced, let's say, in our RCA patch cord, it could be in a circuit inside uh, an amplifier or preamplifier. What happens if a little bit of noise arrives? Just a tiny little bit. Well, it's going to be here, isn't it? And it's going to be here. And it's going to be here. And watch this. That little bit of noise, this stage doesn't know what is music and what is noise, other than the fact that it can cancel out out of phase noise that gets dropped onto the wire here or onto our cable here. This, this just goes through this amplifier stage, whatever it is, and it gets inverted. Ah, and it's going to come back out. It's going to can get combined. The, whatever your circuit is, a preamp, amplifier, it doesn't matter. It's probably a preamplifier that we're talking about. Amplifiers are, are almost exclusively single-ended devices, so they use unbalanced circuitry. So it's going to come out here, and it's going to be tagging along. It stayed intact. So this stage works great for getting a long cable run and cleaning up any noise that landed onto the cable in between, let's say, the source and the endpoint, but it doesn't do anything for noise that arrived at a previous stage. Okay, let's look at an actual circuit. Now this is my E80CC dual mono stereo preamp. Now, let's just cover this over. This is one channel. And let's just draw in so we would come in here where the signal in comes in. We'd come in with an RCA input. And here's our nominal positive negative. Signal gets amplified in the first stage of the E80CC. When you take the signal off the plate, let's just zoom in a bit more. When you take the signal off, it inverts. It's just a thing. Let's not get hung up on it. We have a bigger signal, right? Because we increased the we increased it. We come off of the cathode, here we're high impedance, we come off the cathode, low impedance, but we don't have any gain, or what people call a unity gain, or a zero gain. We actually might even have a little loss, but let's just call it a unity gain. And the signal stays the same, it doesn't invert off of a cathode. And it, Okay, so that's one channel. Now this is stereo, let's back out a bit. The other channel is exactly the same, right? It's in phase, it's, it's in phase, it's in phase. What if this was a balanced preamp? What's that gonna look like? Well, let's just imagine that we have a little digital music player. It, it could be your streaming device. It could be an SACD player. It doesn't matter what it is, but it's got an XLR out. So now this is a stereo XLR out. So it would it would plug in here and we would have for one channel. So let's imagine that this is the right hand channel. It's no longer that we're only looking at one half of the preamp now. We're going to have our in phase side of our balance signal is going to stay exactly the same. But our feed is going to give us an inverted signal and everything inverts. Until it's recombined, it inverts. Signal strength will be the same if the tube's balanced. Now, here's the thing to remember. 
this used to be a stereo preamplifier. To get a, a true balanced preamplifier in which the you come in balanced and you go out balanced, you need to double the circuit. So you need two more of these to get a balanced circuit. You double everything. You double the number of tubes. You double the number of capacitors. The whole thing multiplies by a factor of two. And in my opinion, as a as a uh, as a designer of what I like to think great sounding great sounding preamps and power amps, uh, but I'm a fairly young designer. I'm a lifetime audiophile, and I'm becoming old. So I've been around for a while. Single ended is where it's at. In my opinion, splitting up. If you don't need to do this now, sometimes at home you're going to have a huge room. And you're going to have your, uh, your stereo set up on the right-hand side of the listening area and not in between your speakers. So you're going to have a long cable run to the power amps, let's say. In that case, a balanced cable setup might make good sense because a really long uh, RCA run can be problematic for noise. Not always. You know, it depends on how much noise is present in the room. Um, but in my opinion, in most cases, we don't, we don't need to go balanced. There's no need. My in my system, my longest cable run, uh, my longest patch cord, is um, is a meter and a bit, or, or 36 inches, three feet, and most of them are shorter than that. Um, my longest um, cable run is my speaker cable, and you don't do speakers balanced, not unless you've got some self-powered things, and we're not going to talk about those <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, but you're going to have a pair of conductors, a positive and a negative, to your speakers. And my longest one is, I think, six feet or something like that. Okay. Well, we're, we're talking about the E80CC. And what's going on over at Melatone Kits? Well, lots is going on. Hang on, let me go and grab the preamp. Let's back up. So, on Monday, the first four URI kits went to the test builders and it was a lot of work and I'm really happy that uh, they're gone um, and at the same time this week we finished up the video series uh, there's a YouTube channel uh, Melatone Kits and there's um, oh god I don't know how many videos are there there's 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 lots there's over 30 videos my son Charles helped out with the editing, editing, so if there's any mistakes in the videos, they're mine because you know he's he's just editing for you know joining them up and things like that. He did a great job though. We, we've got screens so that you can you know click forward. We've got a uh, if you scroll to the bottom underneath the actual screen, you'll see uh, an index with links to all of the videos. Anyways, that's all up for the URI. And because that's done, I can finally start working on the E80CC. <laughs> Say that's six times in a row. The E80CC preamp. It's a dual mono design. It goes out as a full kit or a light kit. The light kit just has the electronics, no uh, top plate or plinth. And on Monday, I start pulling parts and start. I start filming the build series. Let's just take a really quick look at it. The E80CC, this tube is a wonderful sounding tube. It's a very clean, clear tube with lots of drive. It has a mu of 27 or a gain of 27. It's basically a higher spec, higher quality, better built 12AU7. And it's a dual design. It's got a single power transformer which has a twin secondary winding. So it has um, it's basically two transformers inside of one envelope. And after that, everything is twin. So twin filter caps, uh, twin chokes. Now this is the prototype. So the actual kit is a little cleaner. You know, the, the boards are the production boards. So overall, it's just a little nicer. There's fewer screw fasteners and things like that. So we have dual power supply boards, dual preamp boards, and um, it's it's just it's it's 
the I've got two preamp designs and they're both very distinctive. This one is very clean, clear, crisp with lots of drive. And the Universal 6U12SN7 preamp is a very warm, rich sounding preamp uh, with lower gain. They both drive the URI monoblocks wonderfully. And they both sound great, but they have their own sound signatures. Okay, let's see what came in this week. Oh, and that reminds me, there are uh, four URI monoblock kits left for test builders, and there's room for one inexperienced um, test builder. And there are, let me think, there are three E80CC uh, kit preamps left, and there's room for one inexperienced test builder. Well, this week, um, my partner and son Charles sent me thousands of tubes. And I'm not going to go over them all. <laughs> we don't want these videos to go forever. In fact, I get complaints. Jim, cut those videos shorter. <laughs> I, I try. Um, so we're just going to go over um, a few tubes every week until we get through the, the big shipment. This is one of my favorite early design 6SN7 GTBs. Now, Look at all the rebrand. These are all the same tube. RCA, Rogers, GE, Westinghouse, and Marconi. Who do you think actually designed and made this tube? Well, I am pretty sure it was Marconi. They built them in Montreal. They may have built them in Toronto under license. I'm not 100% sure. Westinghouse had a, had a plant in, um, in Toronto. Actually, Rogers had a big plant in Toronto, but Rogers almost certainly just rebranded the Marconi tube. These look exactly like the earlier GT version, but the GTB has a higher spec, of course, and they're modeled on what I think is the very first 6SN7 design. Marconi goes way back to the very beginning of telegraph and radio and tubes. And in fact, Marconi USA was the foundation for what became RCA. Neat, huh? Anyways, this is an elevated black T-plate with a bottom getter, waist chrome. Um, they're, they're warm, rich sounding tubes with a, a really nice top end. And, you know, best of all, they're not expensive. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think the Sylvania bad boys were actually, they either licensed the design from Marconi or they just copied it and came up with their own version because Marconi predates Sylvania by quite a bit. Okay, if you stay till the end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, I've got $20 shipping, flat rate shipping around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Vowels and More signing off. Cheers, everyone.